Today we're going to take a quick look at Silverstone's new Milo series ML03 case. The ML03 exterior is understated and plain except for a strip of textured aluminum that covers the front. The front panel has power and reset buttons, two USB 3 ports, mic and audio ports, and the power and hard drive activity LEDs. The case has a full-size 5 quarter inch drive bay that can house an optical drive or any number of drive bay devices. The back of the case has four half-height expansion slots and a full slot above the I.O. area. After removing the top cover, you can see the support bar. With a reinforced top cover, the case is capable of stacking with other devices, making it ideal for installing in media cabinets. When we first opened the ML03, we were surprised by the number of available hard drive mounting points. Micro ATX, Mini DTX, and Mini ITX motherboards are all supported in this model. Standard ATX power supplies can be used, but they must be no larger than 140mm in depth, and they must be non-modular. We'll talk a little bit more about this later on. Overall, the inside seems spacious enough for a great system build. Before getting started, we're going to remove the support bar and the optical drive tray. This tray should be removed before trying to take off the 5 and a quarter inch bay cover. This cover comes off easily if removed from the inside of the case. Early on in the build, we discovered a problem mounting a 2.5 inch hard drive to the plastic drive bracket. The included case screws were not long enough to thread into the bottom of the drive. Our 3.5 inch drive fit just fine, but we had to move the laptop drive to another spot in the case. Luckily, there are other locations to install it. Drives can be mounted under the optical drive cage, but there won't be much room to plug in power and data cables. Hard drives can also be installed in place of an optical drive. Silverstone included rubber vibration dampening grommets for this purpose. The parts used for this build are the same ones that we used for our SG07 case review. These are the parts we used for the final build. The Silverstone ML03 case, a Gigabyte GAH55N USB 3 motherboard, an Intel Core i3-530 processor, the Intel stock CPU cooler, a pair of G-Skill DDR3-1333 memory sticks, a Western Digital Scorpio black hard drive, and a Silverstone ST50F-P 500 watt power supply. Total cost of the parts is $535, and that is not including the $20 DVD drive, which was removed for the final build. To begin the build, we need to install the IO shield in the back of the case. This is installed by pushing it into place from inside of the case. Here's a look at the motherboard with the processor, stock CPU cooler, and memory already installed. You can check out our quick look video for the SG07 if you want to see how to install the CPU, CPU fan, and memory. The ML03 comes with the mini ITX motherboard standoffs already pre-installed. The board is installed by lowering it into place on an angle, making sure to line up the ports with the IO shield on the back of the case. With the board in place, we'll secure it with the screws that came with the case. Now here we have the Silverstone SFX series ST45SF power supply. This model is 450 watts and it's made for small form factor cases. This PSU comes with an adapter bracket for mounting it in cases with standard ATX openings like this one. Since we couldn't install the 2.5 inch hard drive on the plastic bracket because of the screw issue, we decided to install it by the optical drive cage. The drive is secured by using three screws through the bottom of the case. With the hard drive in place, we can now reinstall the optical drive cage. The DVD drive is installed by sliding it through the front of the case.
After the drive is in place, it has to be secured using included drive screws. Now it's time to install the power and data cables. Now all these cables are keyed to fit in only one direction. First we'll install the 24 pin motherboard power cable. To install just push it into the socket until it's fully seated. Next we'll install the 4 pin ATX power connector. On this particular motherboard, it's located right next to the CPU. Here you can see the hook on the connector that's used to hold it in place. The MLO3 case can be used with a video card if one is necessary, but you will have to use one that has a half height bracket like this one here. We're not going to be using an add-on card for this build, but we wanted to show a card being installed just to give a better idea of the capabilities of the case. Our Core i3-530 processor includes a built-in graphics core. Now these integrated graphics are more than enough for a Windows Home Server PC. Next we'll power up our DVD drive with a SATA power cable. The hard drive is also powered with a SATA power cable, but we ran into a small problem when plugging it in. The hard drive is mounted so close to the bottom of the case that a standard SATA power cable won't fit. To get around this, we had to use a Molex to SATA power cable adapter that has a straight connector on the end of it. Next, we'll connect the HD audio cable to the motherboard. This cable connects the case's front panel audio connectors to your motherboard. This is good if you want to hook up headphones or a microphone to the front of your case. The next thing to hook up will be the case's front panel connectors. Now these cables are used for the power and reset switches and the front LEDs. Check your motherboard's manual for a diagram of how to plug these cables in. Each motherboard will have a different layout for these particular cables. Next we'll connect our SATA data cables to our hard drive and DVD drive. The cables with angled connectors really come in handy for certain installs where space can be an issue. The SATA cables were plugged into the SATA 0 and SATA 1 ports on our motherboard. After the cables were installed, we decided to clean it up a bit by using tie straps. Finally, the support bracket needs to be installed before putting the cover back on the case. The top of the case has a vent area right above the CPU area. The included magnetic filter can be placed over the opening to help keep dust out of the system. Now after the build was complete, we weren't really happy with the power supply cables being so close to the CPU area. This isn't the fault of the PSU. This Gigabyte motherboard has the power connector on the opposite side from where our PSU is at. We decided to swap out our PSU for the Silverstone ST50F-P model. Due to size restrictions inside the MLO3 case, modular PSU models won't really fit if an optical drive is installed. We decided to remove our DVD drive because modular PSU cables stick out too far. We don't really need a DVD drive for this build because the PC is going to be used as a server anyway, and the operating system can be installed using a bootable USB drive. We also added a second hard drive to the system and moved our 2.5 inch laptop drive to the optical drive cage. The MLO3 case comes with an adapter cable that allows us to attach the front USB 3 ports to the USB 2 motherboard headers. Current motherboards do not have USB 3 headers built in yet, so the option to be able to hook them up with this adapter is a really nice touch. We also installed four optional 80mm case fans. Again, the power cables on that side of the motherboard really forced us to tie up our cables to prevent them from getting caught in the fan blades. All in all, this case worked pretty well for our server build. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoyed this quick look at Silverstone's MLO3.